Honorable Ndozi, in my order, in order, in my capacity as a chairperson responsible for internal arrangements as well as uh, learning and development, we would like to congratulate Honorable Ndozi for the attainment of your doctorate. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I also want to congratulate all other members who have done well this year from other institutions. You can clap the hands for yourselves. Thank you very much. Don't be jealous. There are other people who are studying and passed. I'm the principal I know. <laughs> order. Honorable Paulson, what's the point of order? Chairperson, um, I, I just wanted to bring it to your attention that this side, this side of the house rose and applauded Dr. Ndlozi, but those sour Order, ones there, honorable member, that's not a point of order. But those sour ones there, they sat and order. they looked miserable. Honorable Paulson, don't spoil the congratulatory <laughs> message you have just given to Honorable Ndlozi. <laughs> honorable Ndlozi, over to you. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I, I appreciate that. You've always been uh, very kind. And uh, thanks to the, to, the, to the rest of the members of the House. The question of debate proposed by the ANC today is based on a misdiagnosis of our economic problems. Our country enjoyed economic growth in the best years of neoliberalism between 1998 and 2004 with a good, knowledgeable president, largely competent cabinet, with a center that holds economic growth was achieved at the highest of 5.5% in 2002. But this growth was jobless, particularly for the majority of black people. Those who worked, worked in precarious jobs without benefits. The hope with this growth and a stable inflation was that investments, in particular foreign direct investments, would come. But foreign direct investments never rose above 6%. President Mandela, who was the most morally high, upright international figure, um, presided over our economy. Did foreign direct, med, direct investment come? Dololo. President Mbeki was the most knowledgeable leader with a master's degree in economics from Sussex. Did foreign direct investment come? Dololo. Now tell me, do you think, even if we were to realize economic growth, will foreign direct investment come with Ubabaga Tutuzani as president? You must think again. But also we have another problem. White business has no confidence in South Africa. Uh, this is demonstrated. Order. Chair order. order. What's the point of order, Honorable We Member? don't have Uwawara to Tuzane in this house. We know that how we have to address the members and the president. Please. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Member. I've noted you may continue. We also have a big problem in that white business actually has no confidence in the success and the story of this country. This is demonstrated by the fact that it is estimated that, total, that the total cash deposits held by private sector, excluding financial institutions like banks, was at $719 billion in February 2016. This is abnormal. It means that we have enough money to make the necessary impetus for industrial development, but the people who hold it won't make the investment. And they've not been able to make the investment since 1994. So what do we need? We need a corrupt free government with men and women of integrity and who are patriotic. We have to discontinue private ownership of our strategic sectors. We need a state bank. We need to nationalize the mines. We need a made in South Africa industrial revolution. We need to make our TVs in South Africa. We need to make our cell phones in South Africa. We need to make our VASLABs, our VASCOMs, our teaspoons in South Africa. We need factories for the products that we consume our ourselves. But we're unable to do that because on one hand, we've got the most corrupt, politically unstable, contradictory leadership that is presiding over our country, and we have business, in particular white business, that has no confidence in the direction and the, 
and, and, and the stability of this country. So with that particular combination, we're unable to make the necessary drive to create jobs and an economy that produces sustainable growth. So what is the future? Many say that when we do these things, when we nationalize, when we create a state bank, when we produce our product in South Africa, then we're going to cause inflation or that the products are going to be expensive. Well, the reality is that if you get more workers with proper salaries, they will have enough money to buy the products that they produce. Instead of an economic growth and you don't have majority of the country benefiting, jobless growth with high unemployment, with inequalities, it doesn't make any more sense. So the economic story that I've just planted has been in place because of insisting on your liberal framework on one hand and a corrupt government on the other. So the future is economic freedom fighters macroeconomic plan based on this thing that I call made in South Africa industrial revolution. Let us use these investments that are held by white business, produce and uh, create factories Order, that will produce the products that we consume. In up. that way, we'll have Thank an economic you. success. Thank you. Honorable Singh. I can't stand on this thing here.